the New York City draft riots, known at the time as Draft Week, were violent disturbances in New York City that were the culmination of working-class discontent with new laws passed by Congress that year to draft men to fight in the ongoing American Civil War. The riots remain the largest civil and racial insurrection in American history, aside from the Civil War itself. U.S. President Abraham Lincoln diverted several regiments of militia and volunteer troops from following up after the Battle of Gettysburg to control the city. The rioters were overwhelmingly working-class men, primarily ethnic Irish, resenting particularly that wealthier men, who could afford to pay a $300 commutation fee to hire a substitute, were spared from the draft. Initially intended to express anger at the draft, the protests turned into a race riot with white rioters, mainly but not exclusively Irish immigrants, attacking blacks wherever they could find them. The official death toll was listed at 119. The conditions in the city were such that Major General John E. Wool, commander of the Department of the East, said on July 16 that martial law ought to be proclaimed, but I have not a sufficient force to enforce it. The military did not reach the city until after the first day of rioting, when mobs had already ransacked or destroyed numerous public buildings, two Protestant churches, the homes of various abolitionists or sympathizers, many black homes, and the colored orphan asylum at 44th Street and 5th Avenue, which was burned to the ground. The demographics of the city changed as a result of the riot. So many blacks left Manhattan permanently, that by 1865 their population fell below 10,000, the number in 1820. Background, New York's economy was tied to the South. By 1822 nearly half of its exports were cotton shipments. In addition, upstate textile mills processed cotton in manufacturing. New York had such strong business connections to the South that on January 7, 1861, Mayor Fernando Wood, a Democrat, called on the city's Board of Aldermen to declare the city's independence from Albany and from Washington. He said it would have the whole and united support of the southern states. When the Union entered the war, New York City had many sympathizers with the South. The city was also a continuing destination of immigrants. Since the 1840s, most were from Ireland and Germany. In 1860, nearly 25 percent of the New York City population was German-born, and many did not yet speak English. During the 1840s and 1850s, Journalists had published sensational accounts, directed at the working class, dramatizing the evils of interracial socializing, relationships, and marriages. Reformers joined the effort. Newspapers carried derogatory portrayals of blacks and ridiculed black aspirations for equal rights in voting, education, and employment. Pseudo-scientific lectures on phrenology were popular, although countered by doctors. At the time, some areas of the city, such as Lower Manhattan, had mixed populations of residents. The Democratic Party Tammany Hall political machine had been working to enroll immigrants as U.S. citizens so they could vote in local elections, and had strongly recruited Irish, most of whom already spoke English. In 1863, with the war continuing, Congress passed the Enrollment Act to establish a draft for the first time, as more troops were needed. In New York City and other locations, new citizens learned they were expected to register for the draft to fight for their new country. Black men were excluded from the draft as they were largely not considered citizens, and wealthier white men could pay for substitutes. Free blacks and immigrants competed for low-wage jobs in the city. New York political offices, including the mayor, were held by Democrats, but the election of Abraham Lincoln as president had demonstrated the rise in Republican political power nationally. The Emancipation Proclamation of January 1863 alarmed much of the working class in New York, who feared that freed slaves would migrate to the city and add further competition to the labor market. There had already been tensions between black and white workers since the 1850s, particularly at the docks. In March 1863, White longshoremen had refused to work with blacks and rioted, attacking 200 black men. In this area of the city, there were a variety of interracial venues of brothels and bars, and neighborhoods were mixed in terms of residents. Men competed as hacks, craftsmen, and in other jobs. Riots. Equals Monday equals.
There were reports of writing in Buffalo, New York, and certain other cities, but the first drawing of draft numbers a euro on July 11, 1863 a euro occurred peaceably in New York City. The second drawing was held on Monday, July 13, 1863, ten days after the Union victory at Gettysburg. At 10 a.m., a furious crowd of around 500, led by the volunteer firemen of Engine Company 33, attacked the Assistant 9th District Provost Marshal's office, at 3rd Avenue and 47th Street, where the draft was taking place. The crowd threw large paving stones through windows, burst through the doors, and set the building ablaze. When the fire department responded, rioters broke up their vehicles. Others killed horses that were pulling streetcars and smashed the cars. To prevent other parts of the city being notified of the riot, they cut telegraph lines. Many of the rioters were Irish laborers who feared having to compete with emancipated slaves for jobs. Since the New York State Militia had been sent to assist Union troops in Pennsylvania, the New York City Police Department was the only force to try to suppress the riots. The police superintendent, John A. Kennedy, arrived at the site on Monday to check on the situation. Although not in uniform, people in the mob recognized him and attacked him. Kennedy was left nearly unconscious, his face bruised and cut, his eye injured, his lips swollen, and his hand cut with a knife. He had been beaten to a mass of bruises and blood all over his body. Police drew their clubs and revolvers, and charged the crowd, but were overpowered. The police forces were badly outnumbered and unable to quell the riots, but they kept the rioting out of Lower Manhattan below Union Square. Immigrants and others in the bloody Sixth Ward, around the seaport and Five Points area, refrained from getting involved in the rioting. The Bull's Head Hotel on 44th Street, which refused to provide alcohol to the mob, was burned. The mayor's residence on Fifth Avenue, the 8th and 5th District police stations, and other buildings were attacked and set on fire. Other targets included the office of the New York Times. The mob was turned back at the Times office by staff manning Gatling guns, including Times founder Henry Jarvis Raymond. Fire engine companies responded, but some firefighters were sympathetic to the rioters, as they had also been drafted on Saturday. Later in the afternoon, Authorities shot and killed a man as a crowd attacked the armory at 2nd Avenue and 21st Street. The mob broke all the windows with paving stones ripped from the street. Rioters turned against black people as their scapegoats and the primary target of their anger. Many immigrants and other poor people viewed free black men as competition for scarce jobs, and worried about more slaves being emancipated and coming to New York for work. The mob beat tortured or killed numerous black people, including one man who was attacked by a crowd of 400 with clubs and paving stones, then lynched, hanged from a tree and set alight. The Colored Orphan Asylum at 44th Street and 5th Avenue, a symbol of white charity to blacks and of black upward mobility that then provided shelter for 233 children, was attacked by a mob at around 4 p.m. A mob of several thousand, including many women and children, looted the building of its food and supplies. However, the police were able to secure the orphanage for enough time to allow the orphans to escape before the building burned down. Throughout the areas of rioting, mobs attacked and killed at least 11 black people, and destroyed their known homes and businesses, such as James McCune Smith's pharmacy at 93 West Broadway, believed to be the first owned by a black man in the United States. Near the Midtown Docks, tensions brewing since the mid-1850s boiled over. As recently as March 1863, white employers had hired blacks, with whom Irish men refused to work, as longshoremen. An Irish mob attacked 200 blacks who were working on the docks, while other rioters went into the streets in search of all the Negro porters, cartmen and laborers. To attempt to remove all evidence of a black and interracial social life from the area near the docks. White dock workers attacked and destroyed brothels, dance halls, boarding houses, and tenements that catered to blacks. Mobs stripped the clothing off the white owners of these businesses. Equals Tuesday equals, heavy rain fell on Monday night, helping to abate the fires and sending rioters home, but the crowd returned the next day. Rioters burned down the home of Abby Gibbons, 
a prison reformer and the daughter of abolitionist Isaac Hopper. They also attacked white amalgamationists, such as Anne Derrickson and Anne Martin, two white women who were married to black men, and Mary Burke, a white prostitute who catered to black men. The women escaped personal physical harm. Governor Horatio Seymour arrived on Tuesday and spoke at City Hall, where he attempted to assuage the crowd by proclaiming that the Conscription Act was unconstitutional. General John E. Wool, commander of the Eastern District, brought approximately 800 soldiers and Marines in from forts in New York Harbor, West Point, and the Brooklyn Navy Yard. He also ordered the militias to return to New York. Equals Wednesday and Thursday, order restored equals, the situation improved on Wednesday, when Assistant Provost Marshal General Robert Nugent received word from his superior officer, Colonel James Barnett Ferry, to postpone the draft. As this news appeared in newspapers, some rioters stayed home. But some of the militias began to return and used harsh measures against the remaining mobs. Order began to be restored on Thursday. The New York State Militia and some federal troops were returned to New York, including the 152nd New York Volunteers, the 26th Michigan Volunteers, the 27th Indiana Volunteers and the 7th Regiment New York State Militia from Frederick, Maryland, after a forced march. In addition, the governor sent in the 74th and 65th Regiments of the New York State Militia, which had not been in federal service and a section of the 20th Independent Battery, New York Volunteer Artillery from Fort Schuyler in Throg's Neck. The NYSM units were the first to arrive. By July 16, there were several thousand federal troops in the city. A final confrontation occurred on Thursday evening near Gramercy Park. According to Adrian Cook's analysis in his Armies of the Streets, 12 people died on the last day of the riots in skirmishes between rioters, the police, and the army, including one African-American, two soldiers, a bystander, and two women. The New York Times reported on Thursday that Plug Uglies and Blood Tubs gang members from Baltimore, as well as Skill Rangers, Sick and other rowdies of Philadelphia, had come to New York during the unrest to participate in the riots alongside the Dead Rabbits and Macrovillas. The Times editorialized that the scoundrels cannot afford to miss this golden opportunity of indulging their brutal natures, and at the same time serving their colleagues the Copperheads and Sekish, secessionist sympathizers. Aftermath, the exact death toll during the New York draft riots is unknown, but according to historian James M. McPherson, at least 120 people were killed. In all, 11 black men were lynched over five days. The riots forced hundreds of blacks to flee the city. Violence by longshoremen against black men was especially fierce in the docks area. The most reliable estimates indicate at least 2,000 people were injured. Herbert Asbury, the author of the 1928 book Gangs of New York, upon which the 2002 film was based, puts the figure much higher, at 2,000 killed and 8,000 wounded, but this figure is not widely accepted. Total property damage was about $1.05 million. The city treasury later indemnified one quarter of the amount. The historian Samuel Elliott Morrison wrote that the riots were equivalent to a Confederate victory. Fifty buildings, including two Protestant churches and the Colored Orphan Asylum, were burned to the ground. During the riots, landlords, fearing that the mob would destroy their buildings, had driven blacks from their residences. As a result of the violence against blacks, hundreds left New York, including James McCune Smith, moving to Williamsburg, Brooklyn and New Jersey. The white elite in New York organized to provide relief to black riot victims, helping them find new work and homes. The Union League Club and the Committee of Merchants for the Relief of Colored People provided nearly $40,000 to $2,500 victims of the riots. By 1865 the black population had dropped to under 10,000, the lowest since 1820. The white working class riots had changed the demographics of the city, and whites exerted their control in the workplace. They became unequivocally divided from blacks. On August 19, the government resumed the draft in New York. It was completed within ten days without further incident. Fewer men were drafted than had been feared by the working class. 
of the 750,000 selected nationwide for conscription, only about 45,000 went into service. While the rioting mainly involved the working class, middle and upper class New Yorkers had split sentiments on the draft and use of federal power or martial law to enforce it. Many wealthy Democratic businessmen sought to have the draft declared unconstitutional. Tammany Democrats did not seek to have the draft declared unconstitutional, but helped pay the commutation fees for those who were drafted. In December 1863, the Union League Club recruited over 2,000 black soldiers, outfitted and trained them, honoring and sending men off with a parade through the city to the Hudson River docks in March 1864. A crowd of 100,000 watched the procession, which was led by police and members of the Union League Club. New York City's support for the Union cause continued, however grudgingly, and gradually Southern sympathies declined in the city. New York banks eventually financed the Civil War, and the state's industries were more productive than those of the entire Confederacy. By the end of the war, more than 450,000 soldiers, sailors, and militia had enlisted from New York State, which was the most populous state at the time. A total of 46,000 military men from New York State died during the war, more from disease than wounds. Order of battle equals New York City Police Department equals New York Metropolitan Police Department under the command of Superintendent John A. Kennedy Commissioners Thomas Cox and Acton and John G. Bergen took command when Kennedy was seriously injured by a mob during the early stages of the riots. Equals New York State Militia equals First Division, Major General Charles W. Sanchford. Equals Union Army equals Department of the East, Major General John E. Wool headquartered in New York, Defenses of New York City. Brevet Brigadier General Harvey Brown, Brown was in overall command of the military fortresses in New York City at the time and volunteered his services to General Wool. Wool instructed Brown to serve under the command of Militia General Sinchford to which Brown initially refused but eventually offered to serve in whatever capacity needed. Brigadier General Edward R. S. Camby, Artillery, Captain Henry F. Putnam, 12th United States Infantry Regiment. Provost Marshals tasked with overseeing the initial enforcement of the draft, Provost Marshal General USA Colonel James Ferry, Provost Marshal General New York City, Colonel Robert Nugent. Secretary of War Edwin M. Stanton authorized five regiments from Gettysburg, mostly federalized state militia and volunteer units from the Army of the Potomac, to reinforce the New York City Police Department. By the end of the riots, there were more than 4,000 soldiers garrisoned in New York City. Fiction, The Banished Children of Eve, a novel of Civil War New York by Peter Quinn, On Secret Service by John Jakes, Paradise Alley by Kevin Baker, New York, the novel by Edward Rutherford, Newt Gingrich's alternate history novel Grant Comes East, Theatre and Film, the short-lived 1968 Broadway musical Maggie Flynn, starring Shirley Jones was set in the Tobin Orphanage for Black Children. Gangs of New York, a film directed by Martin Scorsese, includes a fictionalized portrayal of the New York draft riots. See also History of New York City, Opposition to the American Civil War, List of Officials Associated with the New York Draft Riots, Part of List of Identities in the Gangs of New York, Fishing Creek Confederacy. Notes. References. Bernstein, Ivor. The New York City Draft Riots, Their Significance for American Society and Politics in the Age of the Civil War. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0198021712. Cook, Adrian. The Armies of the Streets, The New York City Draft Riots of 1863. University Press of Kentucky. ISBN 9780813112985. Fry, James Barnett. New York and the Conscription of 1863. McCabe, James Dabney. The Life and Public Services of Horatio Seymour. Oxford University Press. McPherson, James M., Ordeal by Fire, The Civil War and Reconstruction, New York, Alfred A. Knopf. ISBN 978-0-394-52469-6, Rumsey, 
David. Map of New York and Vicinity. Matthew Drips. Retrieved July 20, 2007. Schechter, Barnett. The Devil's Own Work, The Civil War Draft Riots and the Fight to Reconstruct America. Bloomsbury Publishing. ISBN 0802718376. X. Schechter, Barnett. The Civil War Draft Riots. North and South, 72. Further reading, Dupree, A. Hunter and Leslie H. Fischel, Jr. An Eyewitness Account of the New York Draft Riots, July, 1863 inches, Mississippi Valley Historical Review Vol. 47, No. 3, pages 472 a Euro 479. In JSTOR, United States War and Navy Departments. Official Records of the American Civil War, Volume XXVII, Part E. Walling, George W. Recollections of a New York Chief of Police, Chapter 6. New York Evangelist. July 23, 1863. 33, 30. APS Online, Pages 4. External Links, New York Divided, Slavery and the Civil War Online Exhibit, New York Historical Society, New York Draft Riots, 2002, Source Civil War Society's Civil War Encyclopedia, Civil War Home Website, New York Draft Riots, First Edition Harper's News Report, Sonophysith.net, 1863 New York City Draft Riots, Nincon and New York.org, A Map of Events Mentioned in This Article, Movie History, Choice Critics, Bill Bigelow, The Draft Riot Mystery, Nine Page Lesson Plan for High School Students, 2012. Zinn Education Project Teaching for Change